in America itself is is almost fifty percent or overweight. Yes, uh, which breaks my heart. Uh, just you know, because I know that you have such knowledge that you can teach these people how to get in shape, and mm -hmm. then you also have now this availability to good health to optimize the body. And then I think we can agree, getting in shape is hard. Can we agree on that? Yeah. Especially for the average Joe that doesn't know how important nutrition is or how to train. Yeah. Um, they think just, you know, eat some fish and broccoli yeah. and you're golden and you go to the gym, you just go through the motion, you'll lose weight. Yeah. And it's, it's not that simple. It isn't. It really but isn't. Uh, if you listen to you, um, touch base with Titan Medical, and then on top of that, making sure their body functions well is my point. The point is that there's, instead of one factor, you have five factors now. You got nutrition, uh, better sleep, um, mm -hmm. better training advice. Um, mm -hmm. Then you have uh, a support system to the immune system to make it stronger, and you can keep going. Then you got another five mm -hmm which is, is some of the uh, protocols that you're speaking about. Mm -hmm. Now you're combating that fat. Oh, yeah. From five yeah. different. You're going to get in shape. Yeah. Yeah. It gives hope again. It really does. I mean, especially with some of these medications, like some of these people have lost hope or they lose hope very easily. Well, this is going to give them the motivation that they need um, with the result. Right. And that's the key. Like usually people, if they get results, they keep going. So people that don't get results that stop and they're like, why am I doing this? I, I'm, I'm suffering because I'm, you know, I'm eating right and uh, I'm not getting a drink or whatever it is, right? You, you know, you're, you're taking those vices away, whatever it is. And at that point, like you know, people they just they, they got to get with it. But this helps them get there. So that that's what that's what I love about it. I, I don't like the people that just they use it as a crutch. So, I mean, you can use it. Stop. I see that point. Yeah. In the yeah. way. Then you go back on it. Then we're, we're just going back into a yo-yo effect instead of, listen, or or they stay on a microdose. Like there are people out there that will stay on a microdose and it just curves a little bit. They do it biweekly and, and that suits them just fine and well. But I told them, I'm like, listen, I mean, if you can change these different things, I'm like, you're going to be way better off and feel better. I mean, you know, I mean, I don't know. I just... I don't know. I like going to the gym, you know? So at that point, I, me and you, or, you know, the people that like to do those things might be different animals per se. At that point, I think that everybody would like to do it if they were, I don't know, getting something more out of it. They felt like more value. And some people, like you said, just go through the motions. They don't get any value. They've been training for 10, 15, 20 years, taking all kinds of stuff. And they still like, look like a sack of potatoes. I don't want anybody here to think uh, my statement of, of there's just now five different ways that you can attack this fat and lose weight. I'm still not saying it's easy. It, it's hard for me to get to that condition I want to be in. So, you know, I'm not saying it's it, it's an easy thing, but I will say this. You're such a different animal when you go through the process and you come out. So Johnny's going to talk up to you about uh, how to help your body, things that you can um, take in a healthy way that will help your body. I just want to take a second to talk about your mental state, which again, I, I don't think people, I think they just run past it. I just want to be in better shape. Well, the person you are 12 weeks down the road mentally is a different person. All right. And I freaking love that. I love that because there's a change of the body, but it's them being consistent, being on a regimen now, being on, uh, uh, more coherent to, hey, this is my one vessel. Let me take care of it. And, and, and it's just kind of cool to, to see that change as well. So it's a, it's a nice, I guess, added touch. Um, okay. And so for you guys that are kind of fed up about, oh, I've tried this, I've tried that, I've tried everything. Uh, nothing seems to work. I wish you would just take today to kind of go, all right, I'm giving a call. And, and the number is 727 in my eyesight, 389 and 3220 um, or email. or And I know that uh, Michael Beach went yes. over and touched base after we trained and I talked to him. And so I'm excited to see. Now, this here's a guy that his living is – is on screen oh yeah 
and he's he's a he's competitive. I think a lot of people are there at the, that high level or in that, those positions, right? They gotta be because how many people want that spot? You know, that's that's it's it's a key thing. You gotta you gotta be able to to want it, and you gotta be you gotta be hungry, man. I don't know because it's jungle out there in all different aspects. I mean, so yeah, I get I I put put, put, my, put my hats off to him because he's been doing it for a long time too as well. Yeah. Um. So you, uh, a friend of mine, for you guys that don't know, is Michael Beach, who's on uh, Mayors of Kingstown, a couple, uh, oh, the the perfect couple with Nicole Kidman right now, and also uh, Stallone's great show on um, I think Tulsa. it's HBO Tulsa Tulsa King, which he's yeah. also another friend. Is two other friends are on that show. I got three guys on there. Frank Gorillo's on there, who's yeah. a uh, uh, people don't know a D one wrestler. Back really? The, yeah, yeah. So wow. he's absolute savage. Um, he spars every single day, uh, both boxing and um, grappling. So he's legit, which is wow. great. And I know yeah, that you love awesome. him from the Marvel movies when he tried to take down Captain America. Yep. Yep. But oh, yeah. I know you. this is just trivia. This is outside of talking about health and fitness. They were talking about they're talking to Chris Evans and Thor, I think it was. And they said, so what was the hardest stunts and fights that you had? And the whole cast kind of goes, anytime Frank Gorillo's on set and we have to fight him. <laughs> That's good. He didn't let him off light. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. I know he's going to be in some DC projects coming up. So Superman. Too as well, yeah. That's going to be pretty good. So he, I got yeah. to uh, see a little bit of it when I was out in Ohio when they were out there filming. Oh, nice. So, yeah, is uh, again, these these guys are pushing it to the next level and, and want to stay in shape. And then the, just so you guys out there know, both guys I'm speaking about um, is late 50s early and uh, early 60s Yep. in shape, yeah. taking care of their health, taking care of their bodies in a good way, taking care of their hearts, making sure their uh, cholesterol is in the right place. Can you talk to us about that? Because I know a lot of people – don't worry about that kind of stuff. But cholesterol yeah. is a is a big hit, and I know that there's things that you can do yeah. besides nutrition. Talk to us. So cholesterol is obviously a big thing, right? When we look at cholesterol, I mean, like, well, you know, why should I be so worried about cholesterol? Well, cholesterol is a direct effect to the heart. So at that point, like, you know, if your arteries are all filled up. Um, you know, and blocked, blood's not going to get through and you ain't going to be in a good situation or scenario. So, you know, it's really important to look at these markers in a blood test. And it's usually called a lip, lipid panel with diff. And what does that test for? So we're looking at total cholesterol levels. We want to see what the total cholesterol is. Your triglycerides too as well. And then we want to look at HDL, which is your good cholesterol, and LDL, which is your bad cholesterol. And then you'll look at the ratio between these two. And the big thing about it is, is that your good cholesterol, a lot of people are borderline, you know, to, to low deficient. And a lot of people have high LDLs, which are bad cholesterol. Now, that's because a lot of people have a, a lot of bad diets. A lot of people blame cholesterol problems on genetics. But then you start looking at their diet, their activity and everything that's going on. And you can't attribute it just to genetics because you don't have a healthy lifestyle and the things you're eating are not going to be good for your cholesterol. So this is something that we need to take out as a myth factor per se. And at that point, really look at it and say, all right, well, what can we do to attribute to a good HDL? Right. And we want to eat like good foods. Like if you start eating a whole bunch of processed foods, fried foods, um, these things are going to directly impact your LDL, your bad cholesterol, and not be any help to your good cholesterol. Good cholesterol can come from like good fats. So when we talk about that, we talk about like avocados would be the first thing that pops to my mind, even though I wouldn't eat an avocado if you put it in front of my face. But it's a good one. I'm just being honest because I'm a very picky eater and I just eat what I eat and I just know what I like, right? And as long as the blood test correlates with that diet, then you should be good. If it's correlating against that diet, and you, you to do this blood test, let's say three times, every 30 days you're running this blood test and you don't see progression in the right way, something needs to change. And at that point, you need to start taking some different things out and adding some different things in maybe. 
Another way to get good HDL, all they say is one glass of red wine per day. One glass. So doesn't yes. mean you drink a bottle. You know, so have one regular glass of wine, and then you should be good with HDL too as well. Thanks. Um, one thing that we want to say that for for everybody that's out there and they're going to change up their diet and they're going to start eating right. Uh, there's there's obviously Johnny said you know like the uh, avocado. Um, I like the egg yolk. Um, I like the really good one. I like steak. So steak. cholesterol is is a is a wild thing. Uh, too much hurts you. Not mm -hmm. enough hurts you. And yes. so I think this is, goes back to just because you're eating healthy doesn't mean all our bodies work the same. Some right. people have a tendency to build up uh, their cholesterol or, or their body doesn't react as well. And so everybody's different. So again, I think you don't have to do it for some things, but I say get the blood work just so you see and agree with Johnny. He said, check it. Is it going in the right way? Great. Stay on that path. Check it again. Right. But the brain functions off of cholesterol. So yeah. doing the, I'm going to cut this all the way out. Again, no doesn't good. Make sense. your body does need fats and it needs healthy fats. Yes. Um, and also I believe that your body needs for a lot of people, um, some bad fats at times, just mentally, you want to relax, have fun. We want to eat a little cheat day and stuff. I'm the guy that's going to say, I think that's a good thing. Um, yeah, I do too. Fun. I think it's good. I mean, I definitely, definitely think your cholesterol is a main factor for testosterone too, as well. So yeah, you need some cholesterol guys for sure. A hundred percent. Um, and I totally agree with you. I think that, you know, for mental state, you know, it's, it's okay to have one cheat meal. You know, like a burger, some pizza, whatever it is. But don't go the whole day or week or whatever and do it. I mean, you know, people get caught up in that and they just get caught up in the rush. Like, I'm just going to do it today and I'll be back on my diet tomorrow. Slips into two days, slips into a week, you then know, the month, and then it's yeah. two years. And you're like, where am I at now? And you're like, oh, I should have stopped. And it's just, like at that point, just stop, you know. So just, just limit yourself. And if you can't limit yourself, I don't know what to say. Just take a little little bits and bites. And drink a lot of water, I, you know, fill yourself up. But I mean, I don't, I don't know. I mean, cheats are definitely a must for me. Yeah. And then check in, do the blood work. You'll know if you're going the right way or the wrong way. And also if you don't know, and you don't know how to read them or you don't want to do the research, don't worry. I, I think sometimes you dive in into so much and there's tons of research yeah. on both sides of the field. Uh, talk to the provider. And, and again, this is all about you. And that's what's so yeah. great about having your own provider yeah. that, that can read the blood work to you and with you. And it's not a, uh, I, I think a lot of these companies, I got to turn and burn. I got yeah. five minutes to tell you everything and get you out of there. And it's like, yeah. they're, they're not that way. No. You have five minutes to sell you, Jeffrey says. That's, yeah. that's actually how a lot of these companies do. Five minutes to sell you. <laughs> Oh, you know what's wrong? Wrong, 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 wrong. This is yeah. how you fix, 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 fix. Yeah. yeah, oh. yeah. <laughs> Good. Well, Tate. Jeffrey's got a question before we go into some of these other questions. Hold on one second. And bam. Random one. Cool. What up? Um, I keep seeing these pop up on social media, you know, the reels, and they talk about this and that. What um what can you tell us about Selenk, if anything? Do you have yeah. With it? Um, yeah, I had a little experience. With what Selenium. is it for people that don't it's know? Supposed, it's supposed to help like memory. It's it's in like another peptide um, that they released. I mean, I mean, for memory basis, I, I guess that, that's what it is. I, I haven't really taken it myself. I, I do have some at the house. I haven't used it yet, so I can't really speak on how good it is. Um, I just think that there's definitely some different things out there that work a little bit better, but I haven't tried it yet. So how can I even say that, right? But it just from my experiences, from other people's experience, I guess. So patients have obviously ordered this. They've taken it. And I always want to, especially the first couple that go out, I want to know what the experience is. Like, hey, listen, how's it working? What's going on? And usually I haven't gotten any really good feedback about it. So we haven't really like pushed it out there. That's why we haven't really promoted it. It's in the arsenal. If somebody asked for it and they've already had it before and they liked it. But at that point, like, if we can't get behind it and I can't validate it myself and be like, Hey, this is really the real deal in this. But you know what? 
since you, since you're asking about it, I guess I'll start taking it, and then I'll, <laughs> I'll tell you my experience on it and see what it is. Well, which which one are you behind that you have taken in the past that you you do like? peptide wise? Yeah. Oh man. For the brain. Uh, okay, so for, for the, the brain, brain? yeah. For the brain. I mean, you know, NAD is not a peptide, but I, I NAD for sure. I mean, oh, yeah. NAD is one of the most. If you want to talk about peptides, dihexa. So dihexa is in a pill, so they don't have to inject it. You take it maybe like two to three times a week. And this is supposed to help with short-term memory and long-term memory. So that's a good one because some people have horrible short-term memory or, or yeah. vice versa. So Dihex is definitely another one that you can use for brain utilization, like a nootropic. Right. Um, but, man, I always go back to NAD too, man. I mean, if you can combine those two as well, Ooh. it's going to be even better, you know? That's one thing. Like you can literally combine these things together and get a way better, you know, result because they're using different mechanisms to get those different results. So it's super cool. Um, yeah. So you guys got to check it out. The hex is another one I would definitely recommend for people out Thank there. Thank you. Yeah, for body. sure. 100%. Does your body build up a tolerance to NAD? No. Ooh. Wow. Okay. Okay, so because uh, uh, baby fog is a real thing, so for any of those uh, women out there, men, be supportive. Baby yeah. fog is a real thing. Uh, yeah. Your there, your baby mama is eating uh, for two, and one is very selfish, so it takes that nutrients. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so, yeah, look into that for everybody here again. Uh, also, just like I've said this many times, is, is the first person that called me up and said, hey, FYI, look into NAD was Phil Heath called me years ago and said, look into this because we're out there doing lectures and stuff. And he says, that's how he rolls. He takes his um, couple days uh, build up to to his yeah. lectures and stuff. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's definitely a game changer. I mean, you can take it that day and it work. It's really, really cool. I mean, you will feel a kick in if you take the correct dose. And at that point, like, yeah, it's 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 a game changer. I, I think that one's definitely on the top of the list for anti-aging and for protection from yeah, your, so many other things. You know, I mean, there's so many different benefits for NAD. Like, it's it's out of this world. That's what I'm saying. If you take, you know, a little bit of a variety of these different therapies, like, it's going to help you protect your body. It's going to help so, you, you know, as far as aging, slowing down the aging process. And slowing down what's going on inside too as well. So, yeah, I think uh, NAD and a couple of the other ones in the arsenal can definitely be beneficial for people, especially for longevity and health-wise. Jeffrey, will you uh, put a post up there because they're asking about the proper spelling of that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They're they're getting into it. And if for you guys out there. You about dihexa? Yeah, do, dihexa. do a couple of those ones. Um. And then NAD, just throw it up there again. And when we're talking about, yes, the the some of the main use for this is mine. But, man, there's a lot of research, everybody out there, for NAD, for the cells and regeneration. And also, like Johnny said, slowing down the process. Look, look I don't care if you're 19, 25, 50, 100. We got to minimize the decline. We're all going to check out of this place at some point. But can we minimize the decline and slow it down a little bit so we can we can keep tussling and having our fun? For sure. Absolutely. So down degenerative diseases, neurodegenerative diseases. I mean, that's yeah, that's a big play. I mean, I just seen Brett Favre came out. He has Parkinson's. So wow. You know, so at that point, like, think about that. Is that from because oh, all the hits in the head and there was there something could possibly help him? be preventive about maybe not getting this. I, I don't know. There's, there's definitely some different things happening that I think in the future will be able to help out people that have these different injuries. Um, maybe not have something that on the onslaught as far as Parkinson's. Uh, that's a, that's a tough one, man. Uh, uh, I'm, I've got to meet and, and work with his, uh, him, but work with his wife that does a lot of charity out there. Um, yeah. Good people. Um, nice to me. Uh, that being said, just FYI, you don't need blood work for for NAD. Um, no. But again, it's good to check it up. And I've been around a couple of people this last couple of weeks that surprised me 
when I ask them about, hey, how's your blood work? How's your cholesterol? How's how's the how's everything working? And they go, I, I haven't had I haven't done blood work. Yeah. And they're it's shocking to me. Uh, I, I don't know. What do you why. what are you getting out of not doing it? You're not getting anything out of not doing it, except for like, you know, just like hurting yourself pretty much. What I mean by hurting yourself is is like you don't know what's really going on. Like literally, you know what's going on in every aspect of your world, right? Like from your car to your house, like everything is like tracked. You can see all the data on everything, but you can't see the data on yourself. And that should be your most important thing because without your, you know, yourself, you won't be here. And it really doesn't matter about anything else that you're worried about in your world. So uh, that's, that's so key. Like look inside and know what's going on. Like, yeah, I hear it all the time too. So trust me. I'm I'll take here. care of everybody else. Don't worry about me. Uh, there was a, not a quote, but somebody said it and it really makes sense. Uh, a father was like, I don't need to worry about me. I'm taking care of the family. I'm taking care of the kids. I'm good. I, I'll take care of me later. I'll take care of me later. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Mm -hmm. And uh, you, then the realization of uh, being on the flight and if something goes crazy, put on your mask first before helping an infant or somebody that can't do that. Mm -hmm. and, it, and it triggered something in him um, to make him think as a father, well, yeah, if I am checking out, I'm not taking care of nobody. Right. And that's why I think so many successful businessmen and people that are striving and people that fight against that aging process get up in the morning when the kids are sleeping and do their stuff or be up like you at 5, 5.30 in the morning out yeah. there already doing stuff, well, taking care of yourself so you can do what you do. And not only, I mean, you're taking care of a lot of families because of what you've done and created out there. Mm -hmm. um, so props to you. But I just, you people out there, you people, <laughs> take care of your health. Take it more serious. Yeah, I think it's I think it's key. I mean, you know, going back to that, you know, listen, yes, you want to take care of everybody else. But like you said, if you don't take care of yourself, you're going to be six feet under or you're going to be in a hospital bed dying of something or you're going to be some sort of strain on your family. You don't want that. The whole point is not to be a strain on your family. So at that point, take care of yourself, because if you take care of yourself, you can take care of everybody else even better and make right. sure they're good. You know, I, I always say that and I'm like, listen, I got to make sure that I keep being active, exercising, eating properly. I want to do everything I possibly can to be around for as long as I possibly can to enjoy the time with my family and to be able to conquer in business. So those are my two aspects. That's the goals. What am I going to do to get to these goals and start putting those things in place that you need to do? I mean, people ask me all the time, like, how do you become successful? Well, it means being consistent and doing the right thing over and 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 over. When you don't want to, when you do want to, when people are yanking on you, your wife's yelling at you, whatever it is, you got to stay focused and you got to continue towards the goal. So, I mean, that's that's the number one thing I would tell anybody that they want to be successful and do anything. You come from that sports background, too. So it's the competitive basic motion foot placement uh, over rotation putting the ball in the same spot over and mm -hmm. over from from being a peewee to yeah, 18 all, to all the way up is i i always use the scenario of uh tom brady it's like he was a peewee football player and then he was in his mid 40s playing pro football and he was talking about uh, just practicing his footwork what you haven't got that down yet right so, Life don't work that way. It's continuous. And think about him. He got drafted to the Expos. So he was a baseball player and then switches out. Like, it's just crazy how that happens. I didn't know. He, I didn't know. that. Uh, okay. Oh, All yeah. Right. He was a baseball player. A lot of these guys were baseball players. A lot of quarterbacks, well. right? A lot of quarterbacks. You know, I mean, they played all basketball yeah, too as yeah. well. So did Judge. You know, he's yeah. a baseball player, football, basketball, you know, all state. So, I mean, at that point, like, if you're a good athlete and you're really focused and you're you're doing the right thing, I mean, you you can be successful in anything that you possibly want to do. It just takes the drive. It takes oh, the dedication. Yeah. And, you know, it just takes the focus, I guess. So, Still to me, I did Bo Jackson, one of my favorites. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Think yeah, about he, that. He did both. 
You know, him and Dion. Yeah. You yeah. Know? But I like Bo because he's just a monster of a human. Yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> Uh, I got to see him play for the White Sox when I was a kid. We had season tickets. It was it was awesome. It was wow. awesome. Yeah. It must have been something to see him hit a home run. Just to be on bat and that snap. It was. His hip speed. I oh, mean, dude's fast. Fast. So, uh, unfortunately, we lost a, a huge name in the baseball field uh, yesterday. Um, and I yeah. think he was uh, – how old was Pete Rose? 83. 83 and so uh sad to see him go i hope i hope baseball does him justice at least for his uh lineage um yeah. and put him in the hall of fame he was is yeah. a, a legend Absolutely. what do you think what do you think of pete uh pete rose obviously the hit king at that point in time i mean yeah i mean this guy was an icon he played almost every position on the on the field i mean think about that almost every position on the field that. he played yeah. So, I mean, not only could this guy hit, he could steal bases. I mean, you know, play the field. I mean, this guy knew baseball. He played great baseball, right? And then at that point, being a manager, he's a pretty good manager. I mean, obviously, that's when he got in trouble with the gambling and stuff like that. So, yes, he did wrong. But at that point, as a player, he didn't do wrong. Like, he wasn't caught for gambling when he was a player. That'd be a whole different offense. And at that point, maybe the the, the ban should be like that. But, I mean, they, they should have opened it up when he was alive. So hopefully him being dead and him being gone, they're going to let him in. Um, that would be the only right thing. I mean, me and, my, me and Peter were talking about this the other night. And we're like, you know, baseball Hall of Fame is the hardest to get into. It's harder than football. It's harder than basketball. And they got the writers. And, like, it's just really political, man. I mean, it just is what it is. And they don't let in a whole bunch of players. It doesn't, doesn't happen like that. So, Amazing. yeah, baseball is a, it's, it's a whole new thing, unique thing transcended uh, i i do think though if i'm correct and, and did he bet on his team to win not to his team to lose um, he bet on the Cincinnati Reds to win. Uh, so uh, you know you, you bet on your own team to win I, I i'm cool with that but i understand if he bet on his team to lose right. then it seems sneaky right. but i think hey you know what go bet on yourself in vegas to win your fight if you're ufc right and that's, that's what right. happens the fighters, the fighters literally bet on themselves in Vegas. UFC fighters do it all the time. That's how they make a ton of cash. I mean, come on. Yeah, just, uh, why wouldn't you? And what I mean, and you baseball you know, gets in trouble for it. I, I get coaches going against yourself or this or that. Right. I fully understand. But right. yeah. yeah. And anyways, Pete Rose, great one. And then Chris Christopherson, we lost. Oh, uh, so yeah, yeah right. Great. Uh, so anyway, sorry about that. Sorry for the little downer there, guys. We'll pull this back up. <laughs> Full circle. Johnny was just saying that he has to stay in shape, not just because of you know himself and health and all that, but for the family and everything. And it kind of goes back to how we started this being October 1st. It's kind of Halloween month. Yeah. I'm happy that I get to walk around with my son and, and – be that superhero walking with my son because i felt like when i did that with my dad he was a superhero to me yeah. and i'm like i'm walking with a superhero already he doesn't need a costume and so i hope you fathers out there are still feeling like it or if you do want to be like that this man right here sitting across from me can help you achieve that regardless of your age because we talked about 50s and 60 year olds guys that are absolute crushing it yep yep so i mean yeah at that point whatever age you are 18 and up we can definitely help you guys out um i mean it, and there's no no other feeling like you know memories and making those memories with your son or daughter and at that point like they don't forget those things those things get plugged in their memory banks for the rest of their lives so every little thing that you do makes a big impact later on down the line even if you don't think it does. Yeah, if you guys are watching this, you're probably like me and Johnny in a sense. And I don't want to speak for Johnny, but uh, uh, those cool moments, and your dad's a big boy. Um, so I, I, I remember being a youngster and looking at him and just going, hey, this is him coming down and going, all right, we're home from school. Let's work out, everybody. And it's like, wow, that's badass, right? You know, yeah. For me, it was. I don't know about everybody else, but it just – I'm lucky that I had that 
and I'm assuming you felt the same, having this guy kind of go, hey, let's work on the game. Compared to the person that maybe lost their focus, that comes home and says, hello, son, sits on the couch, turns on the TV and starts eating his chips. Mm -hmm. Metaphorically, it's like uh, there's other things you can do with Titan Medical or myself to kind of yeah. get you out of that rut. Yes. And, and uh, you know, posting, and this is the only reason I say it, this guy says, um, what is your take on public uh, publishing uh, one's blood uh, blood work? I'm assuming he's saying, right? Yeah. Um, and I think putting up your photos or your goals or uh, kind of holds you accountable. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about that? If you have a social media page and you say, hey, guys, I'm going to go on a journey. Mm -hmm. Do you think that might help some individuals? Sure. I, I definitely think that just black out like your personal like, you know, details on it. But yeah, absolutely. If you want to show your levels and kind of where you're at, you know, here's the, what you should not do. Yeah, you, you post your levels and people start telling you what you need to start doing. Oh, don't do that. Don't oh, give into that. Great insight. Definitely post them up, right, for people to see, for people to be educated on. And what you get from credible sources, a.k.a. medical providers, not the coaches, not some other guy that knows what he's doing from the gym or anybody else in between, brother-in-law, sister-in-law, whatever it is, post it, learn from it, help other people, educate them, and then keep on that journey. Because listen, there's nothing wrong with posting blood work unless you're unless you're ashamed of what's on the blood work, right? I mean, at that, that point, then at that don't post it because it's totally up to you if you want to do it or not. But if you see something on there, like, all right, my liver functions are high, I'm posting this. All right, well, cool. I'm going to show you guys how I'm going to get my liver functions down. And then you repost it. If you really want to go that route and, and start helping people and educating people. Um, I post my blood work. I don't got nothing to be ashamed of. Everybody knows I'm on HRT and I take all kinds of different peptides and IGF-1 and all kinds of aminos. Everything I do is through Titan. So everything is correlated with that and the blood work. And if something starts being off, then I'll start changing things too as well. Yeah. Great freaking insight because uh, you, you totally made me flip my opinion. Uh, I think you should post – Photos like before and after photos. I think you should post like uh, your diet, and and you can ask questions. I don't think you should post your blood work, I, and and it's for the fact of what he just said, is unless you are mentally strong, mm -hmm. and you're not gonna get triggered. Oh, I said the word, you, you know, by by somebody saying, hey, this doctor says this, this doctor mm -hmm. says this. Mm -hmm. If that doesn't weigh on you, then mm -hmm. I feel sure, whatever. But I think it, it's going to weigh on most people. And, and you can't listen, not about your health. You can't listen to 10 different people. Stay with stay with a doctor. Do your own research. Stay with one person that's giving you advice and see if you can move that to the healthier you yeah. and the more optimized you. Not just healthy, but but are you getting in shape? Do you feel better? Are you emotionally better? Are you clear? Are you, are you having sex? Are you enjoying the day? Are you happy? Mm -hmm. So... Just uh, be careful about posting too much. Yeah, you know, I would yeah. say, and 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 I was gonna say 100% post it. And yeah. Johnny said his thing, and I said I'm with I'm with you, man. Thanks for making that clarification. Yeah, no, for sure. I, I just seen it a million times. You know, I see it in groups. I see it. I see a lot of people post a blood work. You know, and especially some of these influencers now. We're talking about how they're on so much gear, and then they start posting blood work. I'm like, okay, I'm like, all right. <laughs> <laughs> The new things. All right. So what are your thoughts on GLP-1 medications? I think that glucagon-like peptide-1 medications, like semi-glutide or tirazepatide, which are the main active ingredients in Ozempic or Morjorno, mm -hmm. at that point, I think these things are game changers. Um, I think that they are going to help so many people out there in so many ways that it's going to be ridiculous. I mean, 60 to 70% of our population is overweight or, or obese. And at that point, we need to help those people because they're going to get a lot more health problems down the road being like that. So once we get them at a good weight, where their weight should be, then at that point, they're going to be healthier. Um, and we've already seen this in studies with the heart and cardiovascular system using this drug mm -hmm. and with kidneys now. So at that point, 
there's a lot more benefits than just getting weight loss with these drugs. Um, and even an anti-aging effect from taking these drugs by slowing down cellular deterioration by lowering glucose levels in the bloodstream. Um, I think that, you know, these medications are really, really good. Do I think they could be abused? Absolutely. Like anything else. I think that the, the 90 pound girl that wants to lose five pounds and using this drug, it should not be using this drug. Okay. I, I'm totally against that. Like, I think there's other ways you can do it. If you want to lose the five pounds. Okay, cool. We've got other things. I think a more natural route that I don't think you need this, but you know, at, at that point, most people out there, you put 10 people in a room. If we go by the percentages, then six or seven people out of that room are going to need some help in these ways. And a lot of them are going to be severely overweight and obese. So they really need the help. Um, so I think that there's a big benefit, you know, as long as they're used properly and not being abused. Okay, here we go. All right. So it says, yo, Mike, what exercises would you say are the most demanding on the ligaments and tendons? Is there exercises that could specifically target it? If so, which are they? Uh, most demanding on ligaments and tendons? I mean, man, I don't know. Most demanding? Does that mean what? Uh, yeah, it would be a weight thing. It wouldn't be a, right? an exercise. Right. So, it, again, it wouldn't be the exercise. It's how you're doing it and the weight that you're using is, is demanding on connective tissue. So, and, and your point is to, again, make stress to the body. So, here's a cool thing you want demanding on weightlifting. Yeah. Because demanding means that it is hard and then your body is going to fight against it and get stronger to achieve that. And if done correctly, it will get all your body stronger, which, again, is your connective tissue and your ligaments and tendons. Mm -hmm. So that would be a good thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's not an exercise. It's not a trick like, hey, here's an exercise to go get your, your knee stronger, the mm -hmm. ligaments around it. It's like all those exercises mm -hmm. help. Yeah, I agree. I mean, you know, at that point, like, I think it's definitely the weight for sure, 100% and kind of what the exercises you're doing, right? Yeah, but also, don't you think that uh, BPC and, and uh, TB500 could help the ligaments as well? Absolutely. Absolutely. I think BBC157 and TB500 are going to be game changers. And I see somebody was asking about it with the success with shoulder and tendonitis. Absolutely. So I have I have arthritis all through my arm and I'm bone on bone. It helps me out every single day. And there's a ton of patients out there that it helps them specifically for those tendons, ligaments, you know, your muscles. I mean, anything that's going on in there that you maybe have acute or chronic that means it just happened or it's been, been going on for a little bit. At that point, these can help most of those things out there. Now, if it's like a broken bone or something like that, it's not going to do that. It's not going to grow back cartilage. That's definitely going to help especially with the ligaments and tendons in prevention and with an injury. See, that's a great one. I, so I thank you for your question previous to this. Um, but yeah, it, it's train heart, stress the body. Um, don't forget about stressing the mind makes yeah. that stronger as well. But I think what Johnny said, it, it's here's something uh, prior to this. I don't know of anything that actually focuses on, on those things and, Again, I, I see so many people that are in the gym and they're running away from things that hurt. Well, yep. here's your first step into healing. Yep. Well, the first step is giving a call. Yeah. And then, and then go into that. Um, and then also for anybody that's there, when you do call, write down BPC and uh, TB500 and ask about it. If it's not recommended because you don't say anything about how you feel and your body and stuff, make sure to ask about it. And maybe that's something that you guys, you and your provider will come up with and go, yes, uh, this would be a good thing. If that's what you're feeling, if you're sitting at the table for eight hours and your lower back hurts, mm -hmm. you know, well exercise first and get that going, but this is, will help support that. Absolutely. Taking inflammation out of the body too, as well. That's another big benefit of these. So that, that's a driver of, of pain. So Definitely looking to BBC 157, TB500. Uh, actually got some great news. I didn't even get to tell you this yet. So the FDA, obviously, you know, with the ban on peptides and stuff like that, there's been a lot of 
of back and forth, Vobius and all these different people. So they took a couple off of the ban list. Oh my! Oh, take take a second, man. You get me excited. Uh, they, they put it, they they put it down schedule. So I was really excited to hear about this. This means that they're getting somewhere because usually wow. once they cross that line, there is no going yeah. back. They they've already put it in writing and it could hurt you. Like what well, they're not gonna just peel it back, right? So they peeled back CJC with IPA. So CJC and IPA Rowan are around, and those should be around. I don't think there's a, there's gonna be a going away at that point now. AOD is back, back strong. Wow. So I'm very happy about these two being off like that. So this opens up the doors. Now we were still getting this from other pharmacies, not a problem, but you know, it's just it's nice to see it in black and white and regulation that you know that they've done this. So very, very cool stuff. There's more and more stuff just coming down the pipe. And it's just it's just crazy. It's hard to keep up with all the information. It's unfortunate. I I I saw the and government kind of see the fact of, uh, hey, this is a money maker, so let's shut this down for them and let us capitalize on it. Yeah, it's yeah. like uh, too many people are taking it. That's the thing. Too many people are on these medications or therapies, and at that point, like they've done great benefits to these people, so or given great benefits, been very, very beneficial. So at that point, like they're writing in to the FDA, and that's how it was with. Like last year, like the telemedicine laws, they were trying to change back the telemedicine laws. Pre right. 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 And what happened was, was I forgot about that. big onslaught of things that came up. They were moving into this year. Now they were supposed to say in November. Now they haven't came out and everything, but what they've been saying is, is that now they're going to move it a whole nother year. So, you know, obviously, listen, there's a lot of people that are using telemedicine or using these different peptides or different therapies. And, they're strong and, and you know the, the the word of the people is strong so at that point if people really they really make a fit about it then it's gonna it's gonna take notice you know it's when people don't make a fit about it don't and just about it. they can just do what they want right so and we'll see how this all plays out after the election because it, it's gonna be very interesting it's gonna be very very interesting how things roll so we will see how things happen and and what goes on here we go. All right. Do you recommend someone with the flu to keep going to the gym? I would say no. I'm I'm always a no person when somebody think when they know they're sick for sure. Like you've got flu swabbed, you've got COVID swabbed, you've got strep swabbed, something of that matter, and you've came back positive. Now you go into the gym, especially with strep throat. You are highly contagious to give that to everybody around you. Do you think that's fair going somewhere? Would you like it if you went somewhere and somebody was sick and at that point got you sick and maybe you had something super important you had to do the next day or the week afterwards when you're, uh, <coughs> I can't go nowhere. So at that point, or your, your, your back, your throat's like razor blades. I mean, these are just real like life scenarios. I see a lot of people ask this question and I don't think if you got the normal cold, like you got a little cold, you can, you can probably go to the gym. But like if you've got something severe, like at that point, I think you need to stay home for a couple of days. And if you do have a bacterial infection, after 48 hours to 72 hours, then you're not contagious anymore if you're taking your medication as, as directed usually. So what is your take on this, Mike? I like your approach. I like your approach. If, if you know, if, if you're sick enough to – send somebody else out that's not cool um but if you're if you're a cold or something that's simple and and you're not going to get nothing um i like sweating out stuff i've trained um i have a home gym so i it doesn't matter the level i'm at um right and, and then also um yeah i like sweating out if i have a little something something sure. but yeah you know it's it's a it's a cool mental thing um but your body is fighting something. So at the end of the day, if you're trying to build muscle and burn fat, no, just take it off. Relax. You for, get it fight another day. But for the day, dude. Like if you you're know, mentally dependent on it, go train. Dude, it, listen, if you're so mentally dependent on it, do something of a home routine. Keep your yeah. ass at home. 
Yeah. Do something there. Do push-ups. Do jumping jacks. Do anything. You, I mean, there's you could definitely train at home for a day if you were sick, and definitely get some sort something out of it. You know, it's not going to be a total waste. Oh, I couldn't go to the gym. I couldn't do anything today. No, that's not true. So, I mean, I don't care. Even if you want to run outdoors, if you're in a warm climate, you really think you want to do it? You really think you want to rev it up like that? Then go ahead. I wouldn't recommend doing that, it's, especially if you got fevers and the whole nine. You should really start revving things up. And at that point, like, you know, the temperature gets too high, you're, you're going to go and yeah. clock out brain. Yeah. What about not being there in the first place? Is there anything that helps with that immunity, boosting that immunity? It's a great lead in, Jeff. Yeah, so listen – Immune system is everything. And even if you go to a public gym, you're touching weights and you can't wash your hands right after unless you have a little alcohol thing and you're doing it after every set. So at that point, what are you going to do? And you might be a nurse or a healthcare provider or be a first responder and have to be around a ton of different people. Or you might work in the service industry from restaurants to bars to clubs. My point to this is, is that we're around a lot of people and we don't know what people have, right? So what's defending you from these people and the bacteria that they might have or things that they might give you, the cooties? So we really want to look into immune system boosters. And some people are uh, immunocompromised or have you know some sort of immune deficiency, right? So at that point, we really want to work on this. So we've got a couple of different ones. Our tri-immunity, which is probably our most concentrated and potent one, would have glutathione, vitamin C, and zinc. So these are all awesome things to combat different things that you might be coming in contact with out there. Plus getting rid of like free radicals, oxidation within inside the body and fortifying the immune system and making it stronger. You can also take glutathione all by itself. Still going to be a really, really good one, but not as serious, I guess, as triimmune. And then you have nectar of the gods, which has arginine, it has Lysine, NAC, L-carnitine, proline, and this will also have glutathione in it too as well. So you're getting a different effect with blood flow, uh, immune system boosting with lysine along with glutathione too. So there's a lot of different things and aspects you can utilize with this. So these are the three that I would kind of focus on. And then the other one peptide-wise would be TA1. That mostine alpha-1 comes with a thalam gland, and it basically creates uh, – Great Did self. Shoot up something and not tell us. Uh, yeah, it sounds like he's giving out information he hasn't even told us. Wait a minute, what's going on here? Oh, TA one. Yeah, man, what's going on, man? Holy cow! <laughs> right that right Johnny today. So, <laughs> thymosin alpha one. Thymosin alpha one is one of the best immune system peptides there are. That is probably the king, I would say. And at this point, it has two types of cells that releases in the body to go after some of these these disease cells. So at that point it goes, it has killer cells and helper cells and these killer cells go down, track down these bad cells, demolish them. And these helper cells come by and then turn them into good cells again. So this one's a game changer for a lot of different things for sicknesses and everything. It makes vaccines more efficient and effective. So if you are taking a vaccination, this is going to make it better. Um, but the big thing about this is fighting um, the different diseases and bacteria that you can come in contact with. This one is the king. Thymosin alpha one. Thymosin alpha one was around way before COVID. But when COVID hit, what happened was mm -hmm. some of these pharmacies were telling providers that this was the COVID cure. And there's doctors out there that started touting it as the COVID cure. And one was in California and got her license taken away, which is serious. She's never getting it back. You know how many years it took her to get that license over some comments about this medication? Just crazy. So finally, they've let it simmer down. And at that point, it's re-entered and, and not been a problem. So the most awful one is on the table too as well. Wow. Man, to go back, to go back, man, 2020. Um, what do we got here? Uh, oh, success stories. I can't fathom yes. how many success stories you have speaking not just of yourself mm -hmm. but oh. I, I can't tell you how many people shoulder tendonitis shoulder issues in general um joints ligaments i guess attendance but specifically shoulders i mean that's probably the number one maybe the number one number two complaint you get a lot of knees in there for sure 100 percent 
But, you know, shoulders, I think, are the main ones because a lot of us, especially as guys, bench press, you know, and we might be bench pressing wrong too much, putting more strain uh, on the shoulder. And at that point, you know, wear and tear over the years or some sort of injury, this is what leads to the problems down the road where you're like, ah, I have these ouchies every single day. I wake up all day long. What can I do with this? And, um, you know, at that point, you know, you don't want to go through surgeries if you don't have to. Right. I mean, that's the ultimate like last resort for me and for a lot of other people mm. out there, you know. I'm I'm with Johnny on all that. Yeah. It just I've I've heard some incredible stories from uh uh people about their injuries and mm. how they came back. And and also not just the average Joes, which you're gonna come back pretty quick, but the most high end athletes. Yep. You know, they're first of all, they're in their 20s, so they should be able to recover quickly and they have the best service. And then they did this on top of that. And they go, I came back so much quicker than previous mm -hmm. years. It's it's mm -hmm. great to hear that. Mm -hmm. Here's a good one for you, because I've had uh, this is one of my favorites. Yes. So anyone have any experience with GHKCU? So, yes, absolutely. We have a ton of patients on GHKCU. Mike's been on GHKCU through us. I've been on GHKCU. Um, so it's, it's a great one. It's a copper peptide and at this point, like, uh, what does it do? So it helps with collagen inside the skin and, or the body, I should say. And at that point, it also helps remodel, resurface the skin. So wrinkles, lines, you know, bad features, scarring. I mean, at that point, this will help rejuvenate that skin and help it maybe glow better, have better elasticity too, as well. So GHKCU is definitely a game changer. I've also seen some people using it with hair foams um, for hair and scalp, you know, so there's a couple of different formulations I've seen out there um, through some of these different pharmacies. And I'm always curious when I see this, like, where'd you come up with this? Why, you know? So, yeah. I've seen yeah. that was one of the things that uh, a couple of the guys models around me and actors uh, were doing that with some kind yeah. of foam for the hair. Yep. 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 Which we offer a foam for the hair, which is great. It has, you know, finasteride, it has a uh, uh, natropost and it has uh, minoxidil in it. So it's a great foam, helps you hit, keep it, grow more, hopefully, and not lose any more. So um, that's one that I use. That's a really, really good one. But these other ones I'm looking into. And then we started looking into our skincare line too, as well, which will have it's all prescription based, which will have like NAD, wow. NAD vitamin wow. C. Well, you have so serum, there. vitamin C, serum. Yes. I love that. Yes. Yeah, so I did. I have that. I actually got the bottles, um, like the samples, like yesterday. So at that point, you know, they're all coming. It's all prescription based. So can't get it over the counter. I can't buy it in my, my lobby. You have to see the provider for it. But at that point, then you can order this for all year if you want to. And I think they're going to really, really take it off. I and mean, they're really good. Are, are you using or possibility of Retin-A uh, uh, on the start of the line for the night? Yep, Retin A and Trenton. Um, and then there's there's a couple of different variations. I'll yeah. send you the 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 recipes. Wow, geez. The formulations. I'm, I'm, I'm that guy. <laughs> People ask Mona what it is. No, I'm I'm the one that's doing the night lotion and the day lotion and the yeah. sunblock. So uh, I'm heavy into that. Um is uh GHK something that uh people right now can uh order from Titan Medical? Yeah, I think GHKCU is still there for sure. Um, injectable, I'm pretty sure I got to check. I know oral is there for sure, a million percent. Um, the injectable, I think, is around. All right, give me a, cu a couple more, Jeffrey. Johnny's on fire. Right, what, what about post finasteride syndrome? Is that not a concern? If you're taking it orally, it's definitely a concern, and this is something that I am concerned about, and I tell everybody about. Like, finasteride is the only FDA approved drug for hair loss now at that point like yes it can cause like male castration sterility is well sterilization but not sterilization killing your sperm but sterilization of your libido and that's really what it does it just turns that part of the brain off i don't know how to describe it i've had it myself so when i started taking the drug and they've got studies, one milligram to five milligrams, and those are the normal doses prescribed, and they do the exact same effect no matter which dose you take, which I think if you take a larger dose, it would probably have more of an effect, right? They say that's not true, but either way, they say that a small percentage of men get the effect of 
low libido or ED issues. Okay. Small percentage, but majority of people that I talk to that have taken finasteride or do take finasteride suffer from these symptoms. And for me, it's just a no go. Like for me, I'm just like, listen, I would rather lose all my hair and be a bull. I'm going to bang all I want. I'm going to be big. I, you know, I, I want to be, I want to look good. You know, is there a balance? Cause huh? is, is there a balance that you can find maybe doing blood work and finding out where your Absolutely. levels are? Absolutely. Um, so you could do both like moderately, maybe keep the hair and also keep your sex drive. Sure. No, absolutely. So at that point, like, you know, if you have hair loss in your family, like no matter what, you might lose your hair, right? That's just a fact unless you do some sort of prevention. And that's kind of when you start early. Like if you know your dad started getting thin or bald when he was 30 and you got the same traits, you better start looking at being preventative about it. And that's that's really one way. But the second way is looking through a blood test and looking what like a DHT level is, the hydrotestosterone, and seeing where that's at. Um, thanks for that question. That was that was a good one. And then also, yeah, again, right back over to the blood work. Check the blood work and see. And then also, yeah, like Johnny says, there's – if done a lot of stuff here, and I and I hate that these people out there just take their advice from the jacked guy from the gym. It's like, oh, you just do this. Well, I'm having side effects. Well, then add this in. Well, then I'm this thing, and then we'll add this in. And it's yep. like, wow, you just a buffet, a salad buffet. Hey, what do you want? You're playing Frankenstein with your own body. You don't have to in today's day and age. No, you don't. That's that's a beautiful thing about it. it. People just, I don't, I don't know. People just don't get it. People don't want to get it. People think that they're smarter than that. Like, it's just like, I don't know. If you were, your body would reflect. Yeah. Sure. You got it. You got a couple more minutes for a couple more of these. Absolutely. Okay. All right. I had an ACL reconstruction at 16. Now I'm 17. I still have worries about, it never becoming normal again because I'm a big fitness enthusiast. How do I deal with regret and grief about it? One thing is, I mean, you know, listen, injuries are tough, especially ACL reconstruction at 16 years old. I never had to go through anything like that. And at that point, like, you know, yeah, it's a pretty serious injury, I guess, but that doesn't mean you, you can't come back and be stronger than what you are right now. You know, I mean, I, I've seen people come back from ACL reconstructions, tears, and at that point still go on and do great things. You know, some people I've seen, hey, listen, they tear it two or three times and they're done. They're done at that point. There's no more. So, you know, to deal with regret, I don't know. I mean, what, you know, how, how did you injure it? Are you, are you regretting maybe you were doing something stupid and lifted too much or, or something happened? I, I, I don't really know the backstory, but – the grief about it, man. I mean, listen, you know, you know, you can sob about it for a little minute, you know, lick your paws. And at that point, you're going to have to put your boots back on and then decide what you're going to want to do and, and start carrying on again because the world is not going to stop no matter what happens. So, you know, that's my best advice. Mike, I'm sure you've got some great knowledge for this guy. I, the only thing I got is the mental approach that – yeah, you're, you're 16, 17, you know, 17 now. There's – Mentally, there's no possible way you should have, I'm sorry, grief about this. It, it, things happen. You you are too young, too young to let that break you at this stage. Yeah. Man, you, yeah, you, you're just much too young to let that break you. I, I fully understand it sucks any injury, um, yeah. but you're going to come back. You're going to be stronger than ever. You're going to come back, train slow, just get into it. Yeah. Um, most pro athletes tell me that it's not that they uh, don't trust it again. There's, there's strong ones that continue on. And then the softer ones, they, they stop. You can't stop living kid. You're, you're yeah. 17, man. You have no idea how beautiful this world is and how much you got ahead of you. Yeah, I mean, you're a big fitness enthusiast, too. It's not like you were, like, seriously playing a sport. Like, if you say, listen, I was a basketball player. Like, I got a D1 scholarship lined up already. I got NIL money because of this. You know, becoming a big fitness enthusiast, 
you can definitely come back from something like this and, and be a super enthusiast if you want to. I, I don't think this is going to hold you back. I think that you're going to have to really dig down and really start, you know, rehabilitating. And at that point, make sure you're strong and, and keep on that path and just, just always know, like, you know, listen, don't be scared about it. But at that point, be you know cautious about not wrecking your leg again, you know, on your ACL. Um, what do we got here? What did you learn and take from Rich Piana? <laughs> Rich. Oh, man. Rest in peace, Rich. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, from anybody, you're going to learn stuff. What I learned from Rich is, uh, and it's the coolest thing, but I learned it a long time ago, but just Rich is one of those people that uh, will get judged for how he looks yeah. um, and never judge somebody for how they look, uh, just how they act and how they are. Um, yeah. Is, is a good thing. And Rich wasn't the first person that may visually you appear one way. Absolutely not. And that, that seems to be the four, uh, the, the answer for most people that I meet. You may think one way because of visually how they look with the piercings or the tattoos or, or whatever, but Man, um, Rich was a great guy. And what I loved about Rich was that he didn't let the outside noise affect him. And I think that's something everybody should uh, uh, stay with. And, and mostly the today, the world we live in, these if somebody can use words and upset you, they're your master. And I, it doesn't matter who's out there and whatever they're saying. And mostly if you're on social media and somebody says something and that triggers you. That's you getting triggered by by yourself, not the individual. You believe what the individual just said, and that's so. That's again on you, getting getting. And so, which nothing bugged him in that sense. So that's, I mean, nothing else to say on that one. Thank you yeah. for that. Yeah, I clicked good. on that one, huh? <laughs> Johnny, Johnny, what do we got coming up? Just on any new. Um, regimens from titan medical and then i'm gonna actually try to see if i can't get some ghk even if sure. it's yeah um but what do you have for the fans out there going forward next couple sure. weeks? so next week uh will be aod as the therapy of the week because like i said it's come back strong i want to make sure everybody gets a hold of it because aod what works is, very well what does AOD do? do what does it do so AOD, um, basically AOD is 176 amino acid sequence of the 191 amino, amino acid sequence that's in growth hormone. So it takes that amino acid sequence, the same one that's in growth hormone, the 176 out of the 191, and that is what applies the weight loss for AOD. Now, how does it work? So it works by two ways, lipolysis and lipogenesis. So what does it do? It basically burns fat that's stored in the body. And it takes the food that you're intaking and it uses energy and not storing fat in the body. So essentially it's doing two great effects for you. You know, AOD is definitely on my arsenal. I mean, I take it, you know, right now, especially for Olympia coming up. Um, you know, that's definitely a good one on the list. You know, it's more of a natural thing. There's no stimulants in it. You know, it's safe for you. You're not going to have any problems or issues. You'd be consistent with the medication and it will help you lose the weight. And that's good for like somebody that wanted to lose five, 10 pounds, right? They can do AOD. And if you want the similar effect to pair it, you can still have the ECA stack plus pair those two together. And now you got the best of both worlds and you can really expedite weight loss and fat loss. I love that. Cause you're, you're, you're retaining that muscle and you're feeding it the amino acids for the muscle yes. to yes. not just uh, retain, but also rebuild itself as you're breaking it down and working out, which yes. I think again is, is great. Um, AOD, um, possibly take this a half an hour before you eat or something. Give it a little time to yeah. get in the system like most peptides. Yeah, usually I tell you know patients or we tell patients here um, is that, listen, take this in the morning right when you get up, right? Take it before you eat, 45 minutes usually, 30 to 45 mm -hmm. minutes, but right in the morning. Because, you know, people ask, well, why? Can I take it at night? Well, it's better in the morning because you're up and moving. Your metabolism is up and burning. When you slow down and you go to sleep, your metabolism is slowing down too as well. So, yeah, you could take it at night, I guess. Uh, but at that point in the morning, it's usually on an empty stomach is the best way. Uh, 
Two more real quick here. Sure. Boom. Thoughts on HMB with creatine. HMB. Yeah, the research is saying that uh, creatine is better when used with HMB. Oh, really? Yeah, that's it's I, just new, it's new research, and yeah, he did, I, did he, did he here is doing his Johnson and Johnson oil and his creatine with his HMB. Uh, so, good job, man. Get out there, and get it. <laughs> What, what, what do you vitamins is vitamins it's like try it see yeah. what you like yeah. um and and it's again and then test it over at titan medical if you want yeah to you can blood test to see if it works really good or it doesn't work really good you'll know right away if it's good or not all right dhea um, yeah is dhea any good dhea is a hormone it's a sex hormone it's good if you're deficient Man, I love when you say sex hormones. It's a sex hormone. It is. <laughs> <You love it. laughs> but if you take a whole bunch of it, it doesn't mean you, you know you're gonna oh it, it's it's not gonna do that. Um okay, you know, note to myself, take and take less than 20. All right. Done. Um, you know, with girls, and I guess some guys, but girls are more um irritated about it, I guess. So if they take DHEA and they're taking testosterone at the same time, they start that. So we would never prescribe that to a female, like starting a testosterone regimen. Because usually DHEA levels naturally go up with testosterone if you're supplementing. But at that point, like if you do, they will break out. And when they break out, they complain. Like they don't want to break out. Like that's that's not a good good look for them. So, and understandably, I don't want to act on me either. So I understand that, but that could be a side effect if you're taking testosterone and DHEA together and you have too much of it. So don't go overboard on the DHEA. If you want to test your DHEA, well, that's already on the female panel. Guys, we can throw it on your panel very easy for 30 bucks. And then you can see what your DHEA is at. If you need DHEA, then you can probably go pick it up over the counter if you really wanted to. But at that point, you can get it from a U.S. licensed pharmacy and we know exactly the potency of what you're going to get. And we can get you DHEA too as well can't get it in California. You can't order it in. They they uh, they stopped the DHEA to California. Man. But California, man, trust me. Well, dude, New York, New York, right? They, they put the weight loss and and and, and sub, um, supplement ban for 18 and and under. Did you hear about this? No. So you can't you can't just go in and buy creatine now as a kid. You have to have an 18-year-old or an adult with you. Weight loss things, any of these different things. New Jersey is going to implement it here very shortly. The bill wow. just passed there. They're going to vote on it. So more and more of these, more of these states, these blue states like that. And I don't want to call it blue state, but it's more and more of these states that are trying to ban weight loss supplements or supplements in general, like creatine, which we know has been studied for how long. Yeah. Oh, there's benefits with creatine. We know this. Uh, understandably that there's no there's no studies with kids on creatine and that is where they're 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 taking the fight like this yeah. like, no studies on this we're giving this to our kids but in turn they should be worried about like and i hate to say this like mcdonald's where you're you're oh johnny you can't go there my friend no i'm gonna attack you people people you love can't McDonald's, do that but, you can't. Guys, <laughs> you can't you can't say it's better for somebody not to get like a supplement then now I'm, I'm not talking about energy drinks i'm talking about like creatine yeah but to get like a supplement like creatine instead of going in and getting some and you're eating something that has chemicals in it of some sort that we know that can be bad for you i i just i can't get there i don't know i have, a, I have one question about dhea is there a particular uh dhea blend mix with something else that you prefer or just basic dhea is is the go-to DHEA okay. by itself. I know some people do pregnenolone, right. some of the hormone, and they mix those two together. Um, but usually those levels aren't bad either. Like we start messing around with all that stuff. Like you're gonna really start digging deep and might have problems if you start overdoing it there if you don't need it. Just uh just to clarify, um, this show is gonna be up on my YouTube and on uh the Michael Hearn show. So this was already talked about today. We we talked about it. Jump back to the beginning of the show. You'll be able to see that we talked about N NDA. Yep. NAD. Sorry, a little dyslexic there. Went reverse oh, on you. Um, oh, good. Johnny, thank you for, for doing this, man. Jeffrey, oh, did, did you it. come up with one last one? Nothing. Nothing. Jeffrey says no. This is all below Johnny. Okay. Guys, thank you for hanging out today. Johnny, thanks for thanks for hanging, brother.
I appreciate it. Thank you guys so much as always, man. Good to see you. Talk always to you later. Good. Talk to you, buddy. Hey, uh, thanks for hanging out, guys. Um, ooh, good information. Good information. Jump back to the beginning of the show. We'll keep this up there. What else do you got for me, Jeffrey? Next, not next week, uh, week after next, the o? or the weekend, I guess you say, the following weekend, we will be at the Mr. Olympia <laughs> booth 732. So hopefully if you guys are coming to the Olympia, come by the booth, say hello, see how we're doing. Hey, and come to the old man, come to the old, come out to Gold's Gym Venice, hang out with us. Oh. October 1st, I had to do a little uh, superhero kind of visual. I don't know if this is like uh, what the Rock's character. So it's kind of like Shazam. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I guess. What was his? Was this Shazam too? I don't know. I like it. That's how we're doing it today. Ah, hello. Black, Black Adam. Black Adam. Okay, this isn't it though, is it? That's pretty. Pretty. Cool. Cl pretty close. This is because I'm doing DHEA, which is a sex hormone. Uh, yeah. Thanks, guys. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. Oh, here we go. That's on B injections and how often? I haven't done it, but I've heard great. You ever done one? No. Maybe I have. Maybe I did do actually a B12 when I was out at Titan Medical. I think we might have done a B12 shot. Um yeah, I think it, but I think my bees were, uh, I take my, yeah, I think I was already fine. So it didn't do, do anything. I know that people that feel run down do the B12 and kind of gives them a boost. I just try it. I would try it. Uh, this was also discussed during the podcast, so just jump back to the beginning, kind of watch through. Um, it's, uh, yeah, protocol, guys. Start young, take care of it. I agree. I agree. Go for it. Sorry. Go for it. You grab uh, something? What do you think about collagen supplements? Yeah, so uh, there's a lot of research both ways saying it does something and a lot of research saying it does does nothing. I, I, I think it's a plus. Just uh, taking your vitamin C and having protein, uh, that's what collagen is basically inside of your body when you mix those two. So, um, yeah, if you like it, and again, there's a lot of this. A lot of the stuff we talked about today is it just goes right to the fact of where your mind is. So getting your blood work done kind of tells you uh, where you are health-wise, right? And so there's a, a relaxation going, okay, my, my numbers are good. I'm healthy. Let's let's keep going forward, I think is, is a good thing. And so like if you like the idea of collagen, which I do, I'll add the collagen in there on my protein drinks. Cardio one a day for 60 minutes versus twice a day for 30 minutes. What do you recommend? I would go twice. Um, how far out are you from your goal would be really the kind of the question there Ooh. is like um, that way you could step it up a little bit more because you're doing it just to burn those calories and get rid of that last bit of body fat uh, as you're getting closer and closer to your goal body. Right. So you do that cardio for those last eight to 12 weeks before we'll call it the show. Basically, it's just you getting ready and getting that fat down. So, you know, go from that 60 and drop it to 30 twice. And throw it in some uh, after some meals or something. We'll finish out the night with some cardio, too. Learned a lot of good recipes from Mo and you. I love the rice with the chicken stock. Mmm. Well played, well played. I love that. <laughs> Yeah, she she uh, she changed up my cooking, man. Off season is is awesome, awesome. Make that that clean food taste incredible. I actually like the food as a diet, not to taste great. Um, the, again, 
a mental thing with me. I like it to taste bland and, and empty. Um, I, I just like the fact that it's harder and it's, uh, I know I'm getting ready for something and making it harder on myself. You don't have to do that at all. No reason for you guys to do that. Make it all taste great. Uh, what do we got there? Drink a lot of water for better pumps in the gym. It's key and four meals before a workout in the afternoon for me. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, we talked about that. We talked about that in the podcast. Go back to start at the beginning. And on that note, guys, we covered a lot of good stuff today. Thank you for hanging out. Thanks for uh, sitting in on this bad boy. Oh, I appreciate that. I appreciate that, Captain. All right, guys. Take care. Have a good one. I'll see you uh, next Tuesday. And then uh, if you guys are in the Titan crew, FYI. Um, we did our check-ins and we got those responses back to you guys. So just keep on track and then I will see you on the next check-ins. All right, guys. Talk to you soon.